Welcome to the 258 Studios podcast. It is now day 7,492 of the government shutdown. It is anarchy, dogs and cats living together. Um, the Martians have invaded, and Pluto is again no longer a planet. Stacy, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I figured we should come back with a with a you know a just little a, just right in there. Yeah, let's be creative. <laughs> Love, it. Love um, it. So hope everybody's doing well. It is uh, the month of January, twenty nineteen. Um, uh, is there anything to like catch up on, or is it is it is it no? Yeah. Um. No. Christmas happened. Yeah. So Santa. So before in- Santa B and E thousands, if not millions, of houses. Yes, and before that, I was in England working. Oh, I don't care about you. And then I was in Las Vegas working. Were you? Yeah. Do you know where I worked? Here. Yep. Because I go out and try to bring stuff here. <laughs> because I, I I have not been able to co- overcome my crippling social anxiety, which is why I have podcasts and we- Gotcha. I got to stop using I, because it's us or we. It's us. It's a team. Well, and you're going to be getting a, married soon, so you, tribe. you should be just using that in general because your future wife is going to yeah, appreciate you it. Know, <laughs> I, you know, up until the day, there's always time to back out. <laughs> Don't. She'll kill you in <laughs> no, your there's sleep. No, there's no one. There's there's no there's no there's no better yin to the to my yang I than agree. my amazing. I agree. Half a world away, shipped fiance, whom yes. I love. Um, we love you, Vic. <laughs> so, whom, whom I love more than Salisbury steak. Um, <laughs> who's our guest today, Stace? Um, somebody that I'm so excited, and I know you're excited about too. Um, but Mike Stevens from WNEP is somebody that we both have looked up to. I well, <clears throat> I, today was the day I actually got to look at him. Yes, instead so, of up or to or down or him <clears throat> looking down at me. I don't know yet. <laughs> Well, you did make, you got to listen, but you, you made some strides for sure. I definitely To catch did. his attention. That's the important and, thing. And and you did. But no, I just was so excited because when I first <clears throat> was, when I was growing up, I mean, I oh, was. you grew up? I grew up. No, oh, I'm still not there yet. But I'd always grew up watching WNEP and I always loved Mike Stevens and he just had that calming effect it was just amazing on tv so i ended up going to school i'm telling you he's like a yoga class without having to hurt your back <laughs> i know yeah but i went to school you know for journalism and i have my master's in communications and my internship i got at wnup which is where i've always wanted to work um and so during my internship because i originally started out going that to was college, the bar not like nbc or no, I was wanted WNEP. WNEP, man. Like, yeah, that, no, that's good. So, I, I'm, I don't not, know I'm not why. criticizing. I don't know why, but it was just like, I don't care about the Today Show. or I mean, I've I've worked for all these big networks and done big events, you know, for all, the, all these networks. There are networks. four words that would describe why I would want to work with WNEP. <clears throat> why is that? Mike Stevens, Nolan Johannes. Yep, I agree. Yeah. I agree. They're they're both amazing. Yeah, and for the people not from NEPA, <laughs> you have no idea what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, but Google them. And it means the world to people like me and Stacy. Yes. Yeah, so or Stacy and Google I. Google it, and you'll see what we mean when you look at Mike Stevens' uh, his videos and all of his work. But I got, so I finally got the chance as an intern to go out with Mike Stevens and have on the road? him on, his, on the road. And be taught um, as an intern, and this was in two thousand and four. So, so, and I remember our first story because he was teaching me how to tell a story. But this story was <laughs> he like, obviously didn't teach you well. Well, apparently, because it's taking no, so kidding. long for the story. He's but so I, wonderful. I, I just, you know, I, I have feel to, like I'm I on wanna, the road. I'm breaking, <laughs> I'm breaking everybody in so they know all the context. Here. Yes. But so it was it was in November of 2004. And I only remember that because um, we did we had to do a story on an albino turkey at an animal shelter that like randomly got brought in by people, I think, because it was a white turkey with red eyes. Like, I mean, it was an albino turkey and it was right before Thanksgiving. It looked like the villain from Arnold Schwarzenegger's (laughs) amazing end of days. No, but it was just the fact that somebody brought a albino turkey to the animal shelter i mean but that's but, but, but i mean that's that's the beauty of what he 
did and does. Yeah. Is he, you're like, what? He takes a crazy story. Hey, but he takes, but he takes it, it, like stories, that, you know, and, and, and on the road's a great name because, because, you know, you know, he talks about in the podcast where they pick like this hundred foot stretch of road. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's so much stuff that happens in that hundred foot stretch that you, you're not paying that. attention to. I mean, I, I actually, I, I had talked about this a few years ago with a few people about an app. Um, because I, on when the road, I, the app. Yeah. Because when you're driving on a road, like it could be a, like a mapping program, but if you're driving on the road, like, wouldn't it be cool to know like little facts about stuff? Like as you're driving, like, this section of road was or, paved last summer. Or just even a personal one. Like I'll drive and I like there's this house on on a back road that I go home on and there's a crashed house like smashed down, you know, trees were growing through I don't it. Think houses crash, but whatever. Yeah. So something <laughs> happened and the house has just been and you know, it just it collapsed a few years ago and it just sits in that spot. Yeah. But I'll never forget like my grandmother driving me. And when we were a kid and her saying that's where my English teacher lived growing up oh, when no I way. was in school. Oh. So it's just like, I know it's like silly and stupid stuff, but it's like, you know, that might be stupid. Yeah, to but silly and stupid else. is subjective. It is. Yeah. But like, it's cool for stuff like me. I mean, if my grandmother never said that, I would have never known or, you know, I mean, just even things that happen on the side of the road, like that hundred miles of road, you have no idea. Feet. hundred feet. I'm sorry. hundred miles. Hundred miles is of bad road is usually what I say yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to people about. Like, yeah, there's a hundred miles of bad road and there's a hundred feet of good road. Yes, okay. Yeah. So the good road. But in that hundred feet, like so much so much has happened. It's just yeah. but to be able to sit here fourteen years later and be interviewing the person that I looked up to and 15. got fifteen. Fifteen. You're right, it's twenty nineteen. Yeah. Um, but to be able to be here and do that with him and and to have him on our show was like what just, a yeah! What a serendipitous yeah, moment it is, and it's just really cool, you know. And he's, I, I have to admit, um, and I say this on the podcast, it's like you know they have that saying where they're like, "Don't you know, never meet your heroes." Mm-hmm. I couldn't be happier. I know. I love. I love him, and like I can't wait to show you like his books and stuff like that. Yeah. I I just I think he has a future. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So if anybody needs to hire Mike Stevens, I think he has a future. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this new kid on the block, Mike Stevens, if, yeah. in case anybody wants, you know. Yeah. No, but this is a great podcast about, I mean, there are aspects. It's like, hope, man. It's hope. It's it's for future writers, current writers, people who want to get into the business, people who don't have any like connection to the business. And if you want to know about Mike Stevens, because yeah, like even you if you said, want to know about the insights of like how the business operates yes. and how it did operate. And, and also Mike Stevens himself, because he always asks the questions. But yeah, nobody ever asked him. Nobody ever. Yeah. Asked, yes. Nobody ever asked him. I feel I feel really fortunate. I feel yeah. like I feel like, you know, when they when they talk about like, you know, pick pick the pick the three people, you know, living or dead that yeah. you want to have dinner with. Mm hmm. I just did it. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. You yeah, don't have I feel to really die. good about it because you're like, "Hey, can we have Mike Stevens on the podcast." I'm like, uh, "Yes, we can have Mike Stevens." Does wait, Mike Stevens is okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "Yeah, he's good." Yeah. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys listen. I hope I hope you enjoy it. Um, I don't know if we have. I think we have other guests coming up that we don't know about yet. <laughs> no, we do. <laughs> we, we do. do. We're just not telling anybody. Yes. Um. Cause you know, I'm a, I'm a man and I, and I fail at, at a lot of things having to do with structure and organization. No, um, but you're the one who keeps me structured. And so I think this is a thing because like what? I can keep your bank account balanced better than I can keep my own. Yeah. And so the fact that you are helping me structure my life because you are so structured. I'm not, you're doing it. I'm you're not ha- structured. Yes, you are. Oh, also real quick. Um, before we get into the intro, um, I'm really debating on this, and I don't know um, if everyone agrees. Um, basically, Stacy um, is. I was thinking, and we might have to have them agree to it. But I was thinking about having you, my mom, and my fiance for like a Valentine's Day podcast. Oh, that's great! I so love it. So, if everybody wants to do it, I'll see if I can convince my family and my lovely bride to be to come in and oh, tell stories out of school. That would be great about Marky. Oh, I would love it. So maybe, maybe, maybe yes. you, maybe you and, and a couple other people could start some sort of online campaign to convince these people who don't like to talk publicly oh, to we'll talk about it. me. We'll get it. 
Yeah. Make it it's happen. All, like, and it's finally, it's like, oh, this one's all about me. And yes. it's all bad shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this one's about me and here's all the dirty you know what, here's think, all the dirty stories well, you can't then, tell we'll do one about me then after that because we might as well if things are gonna happen with us and people want to know about us let's just get all of the skeletons from the closet yeah out of our own mouths and the yeah. people who had to deal with yeah. it so that <laughs> come at me come at me with what bro yeah. I already said it yeah TMZ <laughs> Old fake news. It's not yeah, fake. Not, it's old news. There's no way. There's no way TMZ will ever do anything that covers no, this. But yeah. I'm just, you know, one day we hope. I mean, I, I <laughs> you think, put it out into the world. I think it might one day come someone back. posted a Facebook post about me, and I was really appreciative of it. It wasn't kind, but I was very appreciative uh, of it. Yeah. Um, anything else? <laughs> nope. All right. With that, let's get on to the intro. <laughs> Why is it telling me it's not connected? Oh, that's why. I just want to make sure that like we're in focus. It'd <laughs> be a good thing. Yeah, it's always good to be in focus. Sometimes. Yeah, and you can do everything there was that from Woody, There phone. was that Woody Allen movie. Do you remember? It was this movie called, I think it was uh, Deconstructing Harry. I didn't see it. Oh, my God. And it was, uh, regardless of what anybody thinks about Woody Allen, but um, Robin Williams was in it, and uh, Billy Crystal played the devil. <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> I think I don't think I don't remember if Woody Allen was in it. I only watched it once, but but um, it's it, so there's one line where uh, he's in hell, and he says to and Billy Crystal's like, you know, welcome. Do you know? Do you want air conditioning? Do you want the air conditioning on? And he's like, you have air conditioning in hell, and he's like, yeah, it ruins the environment. Of course we do. <laughs> um, but then Robin Williams played Robin Williams played an actor who was always out of focus. Uh huh. So every time the camera's on him, everyone's in focus except for Robin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'll have to see yeah, that. It was a crazy, like weird, like fever dream movie that uh, apparently Woody Allen felt he had to make. But how do, you, how do you do that? I mean, is it a, is it a like how do you make him out of focus? Do, yeah, is it a screen thing or is it? Yeah, you got to do you got to do something. You either have to do um, rotoscoping, which is cutting it out frame by frame. All right. Um, years and years ago, that was very difficult. Yeah. Um, today they actually have things that you can draw where you want and it'll, it'll, it'll move the frames forward and, and keep it. Jeez. So in other words, like, you know how you have to, you usually have to do stuff on green screen or blue screen. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to anymore. Really? You can just cut it out right, right there in the image. It's incredible, <laughs> which is amazing. But so we're rolling. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know. Yeah. So, um, Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Um, I know that you guys have. This is almost like a like a like a like a. I wouldn't say a class reunion, but um, <laughs> it's kind of like a class reunion. What What you don't know is I need you to tell me everything about Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you there know? are some secrets that we must keep. <laughs> yeah, I like so, him. <laughs> um, See, so, I mean, you were you're you're the you're the the voice. You're that voice that I grew up with. That, Me too. <laughs> that, uh, like, no matter what's happening, and I remember, like, I've always been involved in, uh, like, you know, social issues and, and politics, and, you know, I've had fierce opinions. I, I remember being eight years old thinking Michael Dukakis was the best thing in the world. <laughs> um, but, but, but just every time that you came on the news, it was, it was, it was, there was this, there was this calming effect. And yeah. you can't, and, and it's not, you know, it's weird because in today's society, you know, you have to be loud and boisterous and everybody mm -hmm. needs to pay attention to you. But there was just there's just something about the stories you told and how you told the story mm -hmm. that just made everyone stop. Yeah, it was. It's really like it's, everyone it's really fighting. like a gift. It is. And I don't even know if you realize that. <laughs> Like everyone's fighting at dinner, and then you come on the TV, and everyone is sh quiet for yeah, two mics on two <laughs> two minutes. And, and I've actually had my parents tell me, "Just hold on," You're like because I'm like, "No, I want to yell at you for something." Hit, hold on, Mike Stevens is on. This was before DVR. So I mean, so I mean, where where did you? I mean, like, did you grow up around? Like, I know nothing about you, and that's oh. the amazing thing is that you're telling all these stories, and I know nothing about you. Yeah. Well, I grew up in um, Suarezville, Luzerne County. Did you really? Yeah, it was my hometown. And um, just um, it, it evolved from there, you know. Now, what, were, now what, were, like, what did mom and dad do? Uh, my father worked in a factory, and uh, my mother was a stay-at-home mother, um, which doesn't exist today. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> um, but then she'd work part-time in a dress factory, uh, a couple blocks away from my house. 
make money, you know, obviously right. get things going. And um, so they, you know, that was their, their role in life. So. And did, like, what kind of factory work was your, was your dad doing? Uh, he worked in a plating factory. Oh um, no. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, my generation is like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, somebody had to do it. Well, yeah. I mean, that, I mean, he was the greatest generation, wasn't he? Yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did, did he World serve? World War II. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did yeah. he serve though? Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Where yeah, was he? Where years. was he at? Air Force. Um, let's see. I think Florida, and basic training somewhere. Right. And then Mississippi, I believe. Oof. So yeah, I mean, he didn't go overseas, but he was a mechanic, aircraft mechanic. Um. Well, when he came back here, he went to um. He went to work for this uh, guy who had a plating factory. Right. And that's where he stayed pretty much his whole career. And uh, they used to do things like, for those of you who don't know what plating is, if you look at the top of a pencil, that little gold The thing strip, that holds the eraser on? Yeah. That's, that was plated. Mm-hmm. That's oh, the kinds my of God. Things, that's the kinds of things he would do. And, you, they were, you know, you'd get a thousand of them or whatever and put them into a tank. And somehow, chemically or electronically, those things would bond with a coloring agent. And that was it. And they came out the other side and boom, up to the pencil factory. And know? he did that every, so for how many years did he do that? Oh gosh, I don't know. It was, it was a long time. But the temperatures in the summertime were unbearable. I mean, and, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's something that like people, like we, like people, people complain today about like, you know, yeah, when oh, it's the 90. working conditions at Amazon are terrible. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, well. You have no idea. You know, you really, and, I, and I'm, I'm not saying it's not bad, but. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of Americans who had this yeah. a long time oh, yeah. ago. Yeah, and it, you know, it was one of those things where, <clears throat> excuse me, I did a story a couple of weeks ago about coal mining, and I said to the guy, I said, you know, when when we look at it today, we look at coal mining, and we say, my gosh, that was just a terrible, terrible existence. Right. And he said, not so. This was their calling. This is what they did. And it, is, it was brutal, it was cold, it was damp, dangerous. Yeah. All the negatives you can possibly think of. Yeah. Here you are drilling a hole into a wall, you shove powder into it. And, 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 and then light a fuse. Yeah, ignite and it run. with a 15 second <laughs> yeah. fuse and run. Yeah. And he said, but these guys felt the calling to come in and do this kind of work. And that's what they did. Mm-hmm. They raised their families. You know, and and did the best they could with what they had. And there's and and and, and that's in the you know I I was I was with somebody um the other day who was who was because I'm fascinated with this this area and Me too. And, and not a lot of people realize that like part of the reason the industrial revolution happened was because of the the anthracite coal that we had here. Mm-hmm. And somebody told me a story about um that if if let's say the father of the household died mm-hmm. in the mine, they would put the body on the front porch yeah. and mm-hmm. give the family three days to replace him or else they'd have to move out of their homes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I never realized. But, but the thing, the other, the other thing that I didn't realize is that the labor union started here, like, like John the workers Mitchell. rights. Yeah. John Mitchell was huge with all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize any of that stuff and I feel really ignorant for not knowing it. And it's really fascinating Mm-hmm. you know about this area you know they say all, all roads lead to scranton <laughs> it's true <laughs> you know? it's true but how many times do we get in conversations even about like the knox mine disaster and like have pulled up the stuff that you've done mm-hmm. on i the think it's fascinating i know we want to do a movie on it yeah but they, they this kid this kid just released uh this i wouldn't uh, anybody younger than me is a kid now um <laughs> but they just released a documentary on the knox mine disaster they had a premiere last week i'm, oh, I'm yeah, looking forward right. to seeing I want it, to see it. I, went, I saw it how oh, was it? it oh excellent excellent it's a great, great um, show. Uh, uh, hour forty minutes, I think. Oh, I I, I know. Can't I, see. I, I think they, see they, it. I think it's going to be available in February, and March. Maybe we can get them on. That'd be nice. Yeah, it would um, be. That would be awesome. So, I mean, did, so where did you go to college? You grew up in Sawyersville. Yeah. Or I did went, you not? I, yeah, I went to um, I went to King's College. Did and, you? Uh, nice. Yeah, never, uh, never graduated. Um, huh, that's all right. But because, uh, and I don't. It's not because I failed, really, believe me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what happened was I was working um, night shift at Warm. And oh, WARM? The, the, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, excuse me. I was working the day shift job at Wilk. That's right. where it was. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got it confused <clears> for a second. Working the day shift job at Wilk so I could go to night school at King's. See? Wow. 
And so I, that's what I was doing. And um, the job opportunity at Warm Radio came along. So I moved there, but I had to work a night shift, 3 to 11, right. 11.30, something like that. And um, so I went to, I had to go to Dayside at right. King's. But the workload at King's was like, you had to read half of War and Peace, say, one night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and the next day show up and be able to talk about it. Yeah. And right. I said to the instructor, I said, I can't because I'm working night shift. And she said, I can't help you because that's the way we have to run it during the day side. Right. So I couldn't do it. You know, I had to, I had to drop out and I never went back. Um, and I, at the time I tried to go back um, because I really didn't know, we'll get into this later probably, but I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and, oh, fake it till you make it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's not a new concept. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Good. So we're on the right track. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Keep going. Uh, but, I, yeah, but I tried to go back and, um, and I decided uh, after talking about it for a while that if I went back and actually learned what it was I was doing, I might not be able to do it again. Oh, that really? Sounds, that sounds trite and ridiculous perhaps, but when I looked at it, I thought, if I mess with this, Whatever I'm doing is working. Right. Don't go in and try to do it by book. Because if you do try to do it by book, you're going to be stuck following the book. Mm. And that's going to take away from what you would normally incline to do naturally, which is just to walk in and start talking. Right. Yeah. And I just I just watched this documentary on Netflix called Struggle. Did you see that yet? No, I didn't. It's about this this they call this guy like the Michelangelo of the twentieth century and he's a total lunatic. <laughs> um but these comic book nerds found this guy and all of his work was destroyed in Poland during World War II, but he's absolutely a nutbag. It's fascinating to watch it. I forget the guy's name, but they went in and VHS recorded him because they're like, you know, this guy's in his 80s. We don't, and this is in 1980s. Mm-hmm. We don't know, you know, how long he's going to be. So this one guy went and just recorded him like four hours a week. He would just, he would just ramble and talk. And one of his things was, I never went to art school. Mm-hmm. I think if you go to art school, you're, 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 making your brain think that that's the way you have to do it. Mm-hmm. He's like, instead of just going out and doing it and figuring it out how it works mm-hmm. and if it works and if it doesn't work, you keep trying it. And in his whole thing was an education would have ruined his art. Mm-hmm. And he was, a, he's an amazing sculptor. He's an amazing painter. He's an amazing sketch guy, you know, but going to your point, I mean, that's you went in not knowing what you were doing <laughs> and that's kind of the, I mean, is that, is that the recipe for your success or is that mm-hmm. I, you know, I wish I had a recipe because then I'd be able to answer a question like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're making the recipe. What, so what? So what made what, what made radio be the thing? Like, what made it? Like, why why not go to the factory? Why not? I I wanted to be hmm, hard to hard to back up on that and and give you an exact reason. But I'll tell you something that happened to me. I was in tenth grade in high school, Scoresville right. High School. And we had Class a, size of 500? No. <laughs> my graduating class was 62. Oh, massive. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> for that area. Yeah. Um, but I went to, I was going to 10th grade, and we had a, uh, uh, in English class, uh, a teacher who came in, not as a substitute, but a student teacher. Right. See? So they had to, and she, she came in and, gave her spiel that particular day. And for the first time ever, she had us write poetry. Wait, so 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 10th grade, you're probably 15, 16 years old? Yeah. And, and you've never done that? No, I never did poetry before. Really? Mm-hmm. And I, mean, I do used to do the term papers and that kinds of things. Sure. You know, but, um, and I would... Um, and, but this and, is for you, though. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, uh, she said, you write this poetry and I want to have it, you know, in two days or whatever it was. And I wrote it and she liked it. And I thought, boy, that's unusual. Somebody actually writes, write something and then somebody else likes it. Isn't that neat? <laughs> and that was the way it went, you know, from there on in, I figured, you know, maybe I could write something. So I would start writing better term papers. I'd work on that. And my parents got me a typewriter for Christmas so I could bang away with the keys, you know, and make that kind of noise. That's fascinating. I know. That's awesome. I mean, I mean, 
is that the time when they got you the typewriter? Like after that poetry yeah, class? Yeah, right after that. So otherwise we used to write like, you know. Freehand, yeah. yeah. Or, or print or whatever. So were mom and dad like, if I hear one more click, <laughs> I'm going to lose my That's what it came down mind. to, yeah. Yeah, they basically got you a literature drum kit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. They're like, oh, no. But the advantage, the advantage to a typewriter um, that I found over the years, and we used to, we used them for a long time, mm-hmm. over at 16, they were typewriters for a long, 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 long time. Um, but the advantage of a typewriter is that you think twice before you do the word. Measure twice. Yeah. Yeah. Not once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you didn't do it that way, you were going through whiteout by 55 gallon drums yeah. every year. <laughs> <laughs> So instead of doing the whiteout thing, you would constantly think about what word was going to go down there. Mm-hmm. So you didn't have to go back and cut it out or X over or whatever. And that made us think. Today with a computer, it's nothing. You well, know? I mean, I, that, that was going to be my next question without jumping, you know, yeah. you know, a couple decades ahead or maybe two because I still think you're 37. Um, <laughs> Bless you. Um, do you. How important do you think it is that, you know, and, and you didn't do it. You didn't do it just to make sure you had it right to begin with. You just like, I can't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to pay for that much whiteout. <laughs> and so, I, I don't want to type the whole page yeah, and again. I don't want to type it all <laughs> over again. Yeah, Cause that's yeah. exhausting. Cause there's no copy paste mm-hmm. on a typewriter. So, nope, I mean, was nope. how, how important is it to, to, to really n- like every word is going to have its meaning and it's not just going to be some free thought, you know, thing. How important is that? You know, because we like to, we like to have artists listen to this and mm-hmm. and stuff and you know writers and yeah. hopefully they listen. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no one's ever commented. Thanks for the writing instructions. Yeah. Um, but how how important is that to to be measured with the words that you put on paper and how important they are? Absolutely, one hundred percent. You cannot just throw words down on paper. A lot of people do it, um, and I've read a lot of stuff. People use nasty words so to speak, right? Um, frequently throughout the course of a script. And that to me is always one of those things where, what's the matter, you couldn't come up with something better? Is that your excuse? <laughs> You're going to use a nasty word because you can't come up with something better? Right. Uh, and, you, and you can't, if anybody, who's the, Jerry Seinfeld and um, Jim Gaffigan are the two like examples of like you don't need, like, their words are measured. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think Jerry mm-hmm. Jerry Seinfeld, anybody's ever heard him curse. Mm-mm. You know, maybe mm-hmm. on like a documentary where it was like mm-hmm. R-rated or something like that, but he's never, like his routines don't even have that. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. like, if you can't get it across without having to drop an F-bomb or something, mm-hmm. you really shouldn't get it across. <laughs> no, and you're really not a writer, I think. Because if you, if you use that as a substitute, you're not doing the work. You're not looking in the, I have dictionaries all over my house. I have thesauruses on every computer. I love the sources. Yeah. It is a nice gift. Because if you're looking for the next word that you right. need, or say you use that word in two paragraphs above, you don't want to use it again. No. Mm-hmm. Let's go to a thesaurus and figure out what word we can use to put in there that says the same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's not all in your head. Like sometimes you got to research on how to do it, right? Yeah. In that, in that regard. In that regard, that yes. Word, yeah. 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 Um, Whatever I do, um, is you can't say much... surreptitiously every paragraph. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, it you do it once, and then you go back through it again the second time, and and rework what you think you need, and it's good to go. That's it. You're done. Go on to the next thing. You know? So what was so what was your beginning time like at WILK? <clears throat> and, w- and when was this? When well, was... now the beginning time was WNAK down in Was it really? Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah. Nanny 19, Coke. 1965, I think. Yeah. Get right out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. So that's, so I mean, I mean, well, I mean, so that's like, I mean, what, this is, this is just for, for, a for me question. Yeah. What was the world like after, uh, November of 1963? I just, I, I, cause I'm fascinated with, with, with Kennedy. Mm-hmm. So what was the world like when, you know, I mean, is it like today, like, because I have no point of reference to like, is today better than it was yesterday? Is yesterday better than it was today? I don't. 
I don't know because the sixties were crazy. Yeah. Well, we were into Vietnam at that point. Yep. Burn the bra. Was, yeah. Yeah. There's revolutions. <laughs> there was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. But all those things. All those things were coming to the forefront at that in 1965, 68. Was it Timothy Leary where it's like tune in, drop out? Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. I forget what the phrase is, but yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, that's. You're you're going in there at that at at that moment where it's like mm-hmm. you know from sixty five on shit shit got weird. Yeah, it, got a little, it got a little strange. Yeah, you, know, you can't stay. You had you know yeah. RFK, Martin Luther King. I mean, what yeah. I mean, what was that like? I mean, were you doing the news or were you just doing? Yeah, I started off doing um, doing um, they gave me a half hour of airtime. I could run records. Oh, and, and that was it. That was it. And uh, I was working in a gas station at the time, and um, my cousin's gas station. He and his his buddy owned the place, and so I would go to work there, and then I'd go to work at WNAK, and they'd give me like a half an hour, of the religious show I did, and uh, so it would just run the records, you know, mm-hmm. but it gave me the feel of the control board. Um, I could understand, you know, how like you you. Twist the um, record a little bit to you hit that first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sweet mm-hmm. spot. Yeah. 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 Then it backs up a little bit, like a quarter of a turn, mm-hmm. so that when you hit the switch and you start talking, it's going to hit when it's supposed to hit. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so um, I started doing that, you know, and then gradually moved up to doing news after a while. And that, but, but it wasn't like back then. And I don't know if, you know, I mean, we, we have a generation right now who doesn't know how to use a rotary phone. Yeah. Well, yeah well. So, so I mean, at that mm-hmm. time, like it, that wasn't editorial. I mean, like I always look back at like the Walter Cronkites, the Peter Jennings, mm-hmm. like all those guys. Murrow's like, boys, man. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Was it Murrow? Murrow. Yeah, Edward Murrow. Good night, good luck. Yep. I mean, there was no. It, there really wasn't a lot of editorial. No. On the news. No. So I mean, so like a typical, you know, show for you would be facts. <laughs> <laughs> Just read it and nothing more and nothing less. Yep. <laughs> oh my God, so much in one word. Yes. Did you write that and rewrite it? <laughs> Did I looked you into think the about source. your answer? <laughs> I mean, but but I mean you, you like that was you, it. I mean it's literally like, you know, this happened today, that happened today, that happened today. Zero exactly. opinion about what happened. You're just you're I just, had no opinion. I still have no opinion yeah. on air. It's the news. I mean, yeah. but, but that's part of the integrity of being a journalist, don't oh, you think? Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Do you consider yourself a journalist? Yeah, sure I do. I wrote I wrote news for years. Um, I was. At, I didn't mean that. that, that no, to, no, no. When I, when I repeated it in my head, I'm like, that was kind of insulting. Maybe if you thought no. about it before no, you typed no. it. Yeah, maybe if I wrote it before. Typed it with I, your mouth. <laughs> yeah. No. Can you write out my face? I was, 10 years, I was 10 years in radio, and I went a couple more years... I worked hard news for television and uh, before I got on the road. Now, and, now you uh, mean hard news, like going out stories, yeah, all that. Yeah, I had loser in county. So whatever happened, you know, fire, mm-hmm. accident, whatever. Right, right, right. And, um, and I would do those stories. So they, those were facts. Those, mm-hmm. I didn't put my own feeling in. I don't care if the guy was right or wrong. It's not my position to judge you. Right. My position is to t- deliver the facts. Here are the facts as I know them and the best of my ability to get them. Right. And I'm going to put them on the air exactly this way. Not, and I don't judge you right or wrong. I don't care. I'm on just doing my, on the air. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have my opinions off the air. <clears throat> well, of course, you're a human being. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I reserve that right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so far as my on-air presence goes, I don't have an opinion. Now, the road pieces allow me to, to go a little wider in that spectrum and allow me to get into certain areas. Right. And, but that's another thing. And people, I think kind of expect that and agree with it and live with it. Uh, but when it came to doing news, mm-mm, it was strictly facts by the board. You know, what, what was, can you remember uh, when you were on the radio? Like what was uh, like one, of, can you remember like one of those moments that was just really definitive for you on the radio? As far as reporting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like something where you're like, I was really proud of that, or that one really struck, that that one, like we didn't get it right, or, you mm-hmm. know. It was um, the Agnes Flood, 1972. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, and um, and we did, we did that. I was working at Wilk, mm-hmm. 
Um, we were there, um, got evacuated, ended up at WSCR, I believe it was, up in Scranton. Mm-hmm. So a whole bunch of us, all of us guys who were evacuated, we all end up there, and so the whole bunch of us put aside all our differences. You know, there's always that competitiveness. Now you're talking about other other news news other people. news guys, yeah. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> we all got together up at SCR, and um, and we started disseminating the news. You know, where where you could go to get food, where the evacuation was going on, who was going where, what was happening, and those are the things we were putting we were putting together, and we did. Um, now you're talking about like. At that time, they would be considered competition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So all you guys got in a room, and we're just like, let's yep. work together. Let's work together. Right, yeah. exactly. We're going to do this because it's for the good of the community. It doesn't matter who we are. Yeah, it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't matter ABC, NBC, CBS, nothing. No, yeah, no. You're, you're. Um, we're doing this because this is what we get paid to do. This is what our license covers. Right. And service to the community. So that's what we did. You know? And what I mean, what was that like? I mean, was that was I mean, is that one of those things where at the end of it, every you know, I mean, Agnes was a tragedy, but mm-hmm. but did I mean, did all of all of you like? Do you look at that as like a like a little beacon of a shining moment? I think it. I don't know about the other guys who were involved, um, but I I think my in my mind I did. Um, I thought it was um, something done again for the service of the community. And it almost seems like the adult thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought so. The, the mature thing so. to do. Yeah. 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 Everybody puts aside their differences and <clears throat> says, okay, let's go. How do we do this now? Let's just do it. Now, did you see the same when, because I remember watching your piece on Three Mile Island, and I remember you saying in the beginning of the piece, because you showed pictures of 81, and it was how you guys were the only ones going into it and everybody else was coming out of it. Mm-hmm. Or, and it could have been even September 11th because you did that piece too mm-hmm. <laughs> on Three Mile Island on September 11th. But his, it, like, that scared they're, the hell they're out of going, me. oh, that we've talked about that yeah, on the yeah, show yeah. before and how it did. But imagine in the 70s, because people up here were going to be affected. I mean, it's like 150 mile radius. Like mm-hmm. if, if something was to happen at Three Mile Island in the seventies, when was it, Three Mile Island in the seventies, or was that the early eighties? Seventy nine. Seventy nine. Yeah. 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 So, but to to watch his story and to see that he's the one going into like <laughs> it's like the people go into you know war like firefighters. Yeah, yeah. it is. And Everyone's like, running out of the burning but, building. You're running mm, into it. Yeah. Mm. So, like, I mean, how how is it to know that your life is in danger? Yeah, what goes through your mind at at a, at a like, moment like it's that? It's your job to tell the story, yeah. but you're putting your life in danger as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I wasn't the only one. Don't you know? There were a lot of other guys there who were doing exactly the same thing we were. I was doing mm-hmm. the photographer I was with. Well, you're yeah. all heroically stupid. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's where we get yeah, into you the You got to think about that sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we're all going. Uh, we're all going toward it. Everybody else is going away from it, right? You know, and um, uh, but again, it's part of the story. See, and I really don't know how else you do it. I really don't. I think you tell the story. It's what I've done on the road pieces for years. Right. You tell the story. And that's what you're doing at places like Three Mile Island um, or the Agnes Flood. You tell the story. And uh, you just get the facts. That's what you're looking for is facts. Uh, verifiable facts now. Don't get me wrong. You can't have some guy on the street tell you, you know, I think this happened. And it's, <laughs> no. That's not going to work. That's speculation and conjecture, sir. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a VO that you know yeah. will go viral. Yeah. So you put, right. it, you put it up there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you got to go to, you got to go to the people who actually know what they're talking about mm-hmm. and to confirm it. Right. You have, oh, you actually have to r- report. Yeah. <laughs> what you've confirmed. Yeah. You have yeah. to investigate and then report. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you go to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what, so, I mean, what's, what, I mean, what is, what were the things that you, that are, that were really surprising to you about, you know, even the transition from radio to TV? You had to write to the pictures. And that um, was just, that was just foreign to you or? or? Yeah, because um, in radio, you know, it's, it'd be like sitting here and talking to you. I can, I can write whatever I need to write. Right. Uh, to get the story done. Um, I used to do newspaper columns and I did those for 14 years and I could write whatever I wanted, see, <laughs> but you, in television, if you have a shot of a blue sky mm-hmm. with clouds in it, well now, and that shot's got to go in for some reason. Mm-hmm. Right. 
Well, you got to think of a line <clears throat> to cover that blue sky with clouds in it. If you don't, the photographer is going to come to you and say, what did you do this for? Yeah. I got nothing to cover that with. Right. Okay. So you got to write to the pictures. And as long as you're right to the pictures, you're okay. You're, everything's good. I mean, conceptually, is that almost, and I hate to, I hate to minimize it, but is it almost like a paint by number where you're like, all right, here's the, mm-hmm. here's the things that I have. Now I have to fill in the blanks to, to, to correlate to what that is. I mean, you're trying to paint a picture anyways, right? but yeah. now you have to make the verbiage. That's an interesting analogy. Yeah. Is it? Is yeah. it? Did yeah. I, wait, did I, wait, wait, yeah. did you I? You really got one that is time. It, was it a good, interesting in a good way, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. You're all right. All right. Okay. Uh, no, I think what, what happens is uh, it's it's a, a blending of the two. The guy I worked with for the longest time to do the road pieces, and I've worked with a couple of photographers over the years, um, but the guys I've worked with, they get to think like I do. Um, which can be good or bad, <laughs> but they think the way I do. And when they tell, they tell me I have a great shot to open with, I say, okay, if you think it's a great shot, then I'm going to go with it. And I don't argue. Right. I, I come up with a line <clears throat> that fits the great shot, at least to the best of my ability. Nothing's perfect. Right. No, never. But we do, we do that. The first line goes down. And his picture goes over to cover it. Second line comes up. Maybe it's a sound bite with the subject. Sure. So that comes in. Um, it's all it's all trying to get a matter of flow to the story, from the very first opening shot all the way to the end, the closing line. Now, what was what was what was the process? Because now it's like. Your phone somehow records video, yeah. <laughs> and then you can put it together, and all of a sudden you're a citizen journalist. <clears throat> Um, well, back then, I mean, what did you shoot on and how did you cut it? Hmm. Uh, when I first got into television, it yeah. was film. <clears throat> like actual what? Like 16, eight? Yeah. 16. It was 16, 16 millimeter mil- film. Yeah. Kodak. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stuff like about this big. Yeah. 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 And, um, people think of 35 millimeter, which is massive. Yeah. That, that's big. That's yeah, real. Yeah. It's not that big. This is, oh, plus, no television is the resolution for it at the no. time. So it doesn't even—it's overkill, big time. <laughs> but you had um, you had 16 millimeter film with a, with a mag stripe, magnetic stripe on the side, which allows the, the audio the right? soundtrack, yeah, the, the audio to be recorded. And so you would shoot. I think the stuff was 35 cents a foot to process and buy. Right. And they processed it in the building. Um. So you come back with mags of, of yeah, well, stuff. Yeah, you come back with a can of film. <clears throat> and for, now, this is the thing. You come back with a can of film. I love all of this, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm totally yeah. nerding out. I'm like, Me film. Too. Me <laughs> too. Film, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you'd, you'd shoot all day. Yeah. And uh, whatever the stories were, whatever the day came about, uh, you'd bring back a can or two of film, and you had to hit it at the right time because they were going to do a run, say, at I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon. Which is when they would process all the film. Yeah, well, yeah, one run. That would be the first run. Right. Um, so to say the run was going to go in at three o'clock, well, you had to be up there to physically bring your film in, give to the, the guy who was processing that day, and uh, he would go in, he'd take everybody's film, go into the processing room, and... Come back out an hour later. Shut the... No, wait a minute. Shut the door... <laughs> And you'd hear you know, <laughs> packing the stuff in, you know, and everything. And then the machine would start. Right. So once the machine started, you could turn the lights on and um, open the doors. Right. Right. And the dreaded words through this whole thing, if you were sitting there at your time, now you couldn't write anything yet. Because you, you know really what you didn't, have, right? You didn't know what you had. Oh. <laughs> you had a guess. You had a guess. And you could maybe work out something in your mind. You should ask the shooter, well, did you get this guy doing this? And he'd say, yeah. And I'd say, well, okay, maybe I can work with that. You right. know, and I'll, I'll put a few words down and see what it looks like on paper. But the dreaded words that you didn't want to hear from the photographer in charge that day of processing was <laughs> film break. Oh, no. Yeah, because that meant that somewhere, the thousands of feet of film that were going through that machine broke. Oh. Somewhere there was a break in it. So now the guy slams the door shut, turns off the lights, and in the dark, they're figuring out 
where the break is. With see? zero vi visual on how to yeah, do it. You got to do it by feel. See? Oh my God. <laughs> so they'd crank up, the, they crank this thing up and, um, then, you know, finally they'd work it out so we could get it started again and get the processing going. But now you didn't know what you had. You didn't even know if you had a story at that point because they had no way of telling what broke. And they oh, had, my God. You knew nothing about what and you had. you didn't had. know if it was your reel or somebody else's? Somebody or? else's. Didn't matter. No, no, didn't <laughs> so, so, so you send it, so you send it in to, to the bath at three, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you have that period of time from development to what six o'clock? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you got to write your you got to write the story, mm -hmm. make sure all the visuals match up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Cut it, and then and then what? It goes. Does it go through a telecine or no? Or? Well, you had to you had to do your voice track. So, oh, because you had to add it to your edit. Yeah, you had to do your voice track. Because, like in a Steenbeck? Is that what you were? You were no, you were it was like, just uh, it was on a cassette, a cartridge. So you go in and, and um, throw your card in, and and start talking. Right. Do your do your sound bite or do your um your VL. tracks. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you take the uh, the timing for each one. So in other words, if I just say it just took me fifteen seconds to say what I'm saying now. Right. Okay. So you'd mark fifteen after that, and the photographer would then know that he had fifteen seconds to cover. See. And so the photographer was putting it together, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my I didn't know any of this yeah. stuff. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh you Mike know guys Stevens like is me. still changing my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sitting over there writing the words and and so I don't pay a lot of attention. Right. Um but the photographer would look through it, make sure that we had what we needed to have, if it survived the film break. <laughs> 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 and then um, you know, we'd put the words together and then you'd have to do that it, timing. I mean, that seems like an exciting chaos. Oh, it was, it was, <clears throat> it was. And, and, um, there were times, um, like there, there was what you would call or what was called the A and B reel. Yeah. Okay. So the A reel had, as far as I remember, um, all the video right. on the left side. Mm-hmm. The B side had all the sound. Mm -hmm. Now the director in the new in the show at six o'clock, see, he puts the cartridge in, <laughs> and they the sound guy says, "I'm ready." The director says, "Okay," and meanwhile the guy's out. Somebody's out on the set. The anchor's talking it through, and they they take this package, like say from Mike Stevens in in um, Bethlehem or whatever. Right, right, right. And the director hits the button, the sound starts, the film rolls on the left-hand side, the A roll. Right. Okay. He takes it, when, it's, when his script says 15 seconds, he hits his fader, boom, the B roll comes up. Wow. That's your, that's your track, you have like your, right, your right, audio right. Yeah, uh, yeah. interview. Um, if, there's, if there's cover over that, like B roll over that. Right. That's on the A roll again. <laughs> the director Holy hits shit. the A roll and that rolls over the, the sound. So Oh my God. And that had a that had it all work for a half an hour. I, I mean when mm -hmm. you think I mean when you I can't like you can't even imagine mm -mm. The, the literally the production that it was to to even from the from the incept of of light and sound coming out of a square box. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. up until about like ten years ago, like it, like yeah. just the 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 amount of people and the work and the time oh, yeah. and the and the unknowing. You know, I, I I did a movie where they where they got it's called Short Ends, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're shooting thirty five, and let's say you only I think I think there's eight to twelve minutes per mag, mm -hmm. and let's say you only shoot two minutes of it. The other six to eight minutes, you just you you sell it back to like Kodak or whatever, and they call it short ends, and you can buy them on the cheap. Yeah, I worked a movie where they shot for two full days, and all the footage that nobody realized, all the short ends went through an X-ray machine, so the film was just flashing. Oh my so, god! So, and you're looking at, you're like, oh, this is a six million dollar movie. Yeah. What do you do? 
Oh, we have yeah. to reshoot everything because you can't get it back. Yeah. yeah. And that's like, we don't have to worry about, like today, like my camera over here, it has two cards in it just to be redundant. So mm -hmm. in case one of them fails, it's sure. going to the other one. You don't have, yeah. you don't have that right now. No. You know, and it's, and it's, it's nice to have technology, but you lose the art. It also makes me wonder how much, how many things like were captured and amazing and no one's are ever gone seen them? because of an X-ray machine or something. Mm -hmm. They turn the lights on, you know, and processing or something. Well, like, do you know what, ha you know what happened on D-Day? No. What part? You know this story, right? <laughs> well, what part? There's a lot of stories for D-Day. <laughs> they they had they had all these videographers, these these film guys. Like they would actually teach soldiers how to yeah crank the cameras mm -hmm. and they had they had a, they had one guy the, the the guy who was the point of contact for normandy after all this they they everybody shot all their reels and then they handed it over to them he went back out on a boat was getting on a destroyer as he was getting on a destroyer he slipped and all the film fell into the ocean to never oh be recovered again mm. that's why the normandy invasion only has about like six minutes that they ever Oh, they had hours of footage and the guy just fell, his bag fell in the ocean and, mm. you know, <laughs> so when you look at things like that, you're like, holy shit. Yeah, like, like in the grand scheme of things, how much didn't we see that we yeah, could have, but now like, you can like, with oh, the phone now. Oh, that card that I just bought for $12 that holds two hours of 4K footage, we can yeah. just get another one and we're fine. <laughs> yeah. We can't yeah. redo that. Yeah. What was it? What was it? I mean, did you always, <laughs> how did you transition from you know, doing, doing like news news to, to on the road. Mm -hmm. And was that, was that a natural progression? Was that something that you wanted to do or was that just, I, it was assigned to me. They, uh, Did, wait, the initial thing was like, Mike, you're yeah, doing this. Yeah. Cause yeah. I was, I'd been there maybe, uh, I think we, we started in 78, 1978 with the road pieces. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I, uh, I mean, they're still going. Yeah. That's, that's what, 40 years? 40 years, yeah. It's more than most cartoons on a network. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a little fine, fine line to the story here, a, a, sort of a sideline, so to speak. Wherever, we're, wherever Mike, we're at, whatever <laughs> road you take us down, we're going, buddy. Well, I, right. went, I, I started it, in, let, me, let me give you this part first. Yeah, I, context, perfect. All right, so yeah. 78, um, I've been in television for three years and working the beat. Yep. Um. You get called into the news director's office one day, and he had this thing, this video that um, a consultant brought in, and it was on the Oklahoma road. And the guy showed us the video, and he showed us the guy doing it, you know, and a couple of stories. And the news director said, all right, he said, this is what you're going to do from now on. Wait, from now on? From now on. And I said, really? But what is it? <laughs> <laughs> And he said, he said, well, I'm not sure, but we want you to do it three times a week. <laughs> so, really? Yeah. So off I go. Yeah. But I mean, in that moment where you're like, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was it. Exactly. Of course. I didn't know what we were going to do. <laughs> I mean, you and can. And if this sucks, am I going to get fired? Yeah. Am I going to get fired? <laughs> no, but it seems like, it seems like it's, and this is probably, this is a huge exaggeration, but it's like, all right, we want you to go to the moon. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I don't. I don't know how to get to the moon. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Well, that's the instance where... But, but, it, but and at the same time, why are you the fit for that? Well, it was because I was telling stories. That's what I Even did. Even with your news pieces. Yeah. And, um, and I think the other people were more attuned to uh, hard news. They liked what they were doing. Uh, they enjoyed it. The challenge of it, and it is a challenge. It's a fight every day to get oh, a story. Oh, it's exhausting. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I have nothing but empathy That's why for I went it. behind the scenes. Yeah. It was just too... It was just... <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. It's long tough day. stuff. It's a man. long day. Yeah. You're yeah. sitting in courtrooms oh, and yeah. you're go you're like right in the front lines of hearing all the terrible things that mm -hmm. happened yep. that you can't tell the public because yep. it's too much it's yeah. too hard information for them and to digest. And that's why God invented alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably why all of NPA is an alcoholic. Uh, <laughs> so, so, they, so they're like, All right. Yeah. The, so from, I start from now on. From now on, this is what you're gonna do. Oh. And um and so off I go. And I have no idea what I'm doing. And I literally went going door to door to find a story, you know. And the first guy we found um, was a guy down in Beach Glen. 
Where is, is that? See, yeah. that's what everybody asked. Um, is that by Sawyersville? No, it's further, <laughs> further south than that. And I'll get it wrong. It's either Columbia or Sullivan County. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, it's in sure our viewing area. Well, WNEP's yeah. viewing, oh, it's in our area. viewing area. Yeah. I say ours because I used to work there. Yeah. <laughs> you don't own it, Stacy. No, you I don't. don't own but it. everybody does. They say <laughs> yeah. our. Yeah. Beat our viewing area. Well, I guess Eagles fans can say <laughs> our, our Eagles. So, sure. um, all right. So you go down and you meet this guy in yeah, a he's town a, I've never heard of in my life. Right, and <laughs> he uh, he was the uh, the guy who was a weather forecasting farmer. What? Yeah, and he would. Um, and I got I found him because I went to the gas station across the street from his house, and I was bemoaning the fact that I couldn't find a story, and the lady behind the counter at the gas station said. Well, you know, you ought to go over and see this fellow across the street. And I said, why? And she said, well, he's a weather forecasting farmer. And I thought, oh, gee, that sounds like a story. Yeah. I guess I'll go. And I went over and met this guy and his wife. I Lovely. mean, was, was he was he, was he ske- skeptical at first or was he? Oh, yeah. But, but you know, <laughs> the thing is. You or did talk- he know you from the news? No, no, no. He didn't know me from Adam. Really? Yeah. Well, probably because he's out there forecasting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, he's busy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, he agreed to do the story, and and the way we we got to do it, we ended up on his front porch. Um, this is like a couple of days later. We came back, uh-huh. uh, end up on his front porch, and um, he said, "Now, he said, um, while we were sitting here talking, he said I heard a cricket chirp underneath the porch fourteen times." You're shitting me. And I said, <laughs> I said, really? And he said, yeah. He said, let's listen. Now we're still shooting film. This is a f- oh, every <laughs> second that goes by is just dollars yeah. just going so through. So we're listening for the la- for a minute, and your photographers there going like, oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> his job is flashing before <laughs> his fires, and uh, <laughs> and so we uh, he said, you know, he said now he said, did you hear that cricket chirp? We'll do a thousand crickets under the porch for crying out loud. I can't. Right. Uh-huh. right. But he had this one picked out, and he said, you know what that means, don't you? And I said, N- what? He said, it's going to be a fair day tomorrow. I said, how do you know that? He said, well, I don't know for sure, but it's happened often enough. There's got to be some truth to it. (laughs) (laughs) So he said, he said, you see those birds on that wire across the street? I said, yeah. He said, you know what that means? (laughs) No. He said, that means it's going to be cloudy and rainy tomorrow night. I said, well, how do you know that? Now, as an aside, these birds are overlooking a cornfield. That's why they're there. Yeah, they're looking for cornfield. They're going to go eat. Yeah, but it's like everybody waiting outside a sizzler. Yeah, Yeah, right. (laughs) So he said, he said, well, he said, I don't know for sure, but it's happened often enough. There's got to be some truth to it, and that's the way we built the story. (laughs) Are you kidding? So, so wait, let me. So this is your first story. The first story. Yeah. So when you go into the news director (laughs) and you present that, like. Like, was it hard to cut or was it? Or oh, was no, it-, it was, it was, a, you know, physically it's a regular story. So technically, as far as the film was concerned, it was a straight story, you know, <laughs> but it was the content that was funny. <laughs> but what would what, your news direct, was he like, oh, this is exactly what I'm talking about? No, or he, he just, just said, like- well, that, I guess that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But that's where, see, that's where it started. And it kind of evolved from there into what it is today see but that but 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 i think i think that that is so beneficial to somebody like you because what you do is you get to actually go and meet the 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 unique and interesting people Mm -hmm. of northeast pennsylvania Mm -hmm. oh yeah and that was the key to that's what kept me going at it so long really because every i mean just in what's there 200 and some thousand people just in Lackawanna County I mean everybody's got a story everybody mm-hmm. has a story see that's the right attitude to take <laughs> yeah if you if you assume that the person in front of you has no story well you're not you've gonna do ruled a good job. out everything yeah. you've ruled it out mm-hmm. and and now you might as well just go on with life because you've missed something so we used to assume that every time we went in I mean, when when I was doing the wandering around, it became much more structured later on. Yeah. Um, because it had to. But um, at that point, when I was wandering around, I just assumed that everybody had a story. And it's true. It's still true today. Everybody's got a story. It just takes somebody to come along and 
figure out how to tell how it. How to tell it. Yeah. Did that, did, did you, being that you got, you, you, you've been doing this for, you know, seven years, um, <laughs> did, did, did that change kind of how you see the world? Mm-hmm. Just starting it? Cause, cause. You know, and, and, and I'm trying to look at it from a point of view of somebody like me who's who's just like, oh, I'm just doing stuff. And then, mm-hmm. like, I do nonprofit work. And then when I do the nonprofit work, it, like, it just changes my perspective on, like, why am I complaining about stuff? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, there's all these cool and interesting things about life in the world that, you know, literally no one stops to smell the roses. I mean, did mm-hmm. did you, did that kind of change you or, or did, or was it always... I. Yeah, I think or like it, a new perspective on life or yeah. issues or. Well, I think it did. You know, it made me stop over, and I did it since uh, variety. I went. I moved from here to Florida, or not here to North Carolina, Wisconsin, and Florida, and then came back again in eighty two, eighty two or eighty three. Eighty two. So what, you started on the road and then you left. <clears throat> yeah, right after Three Mile Island. <clears throat> and uh, so wait, not only were you doing those packages, you were still doing the news. Well, Three Mile Island was one of these all hands on deck thing. You know, oh, where everybody gotcha. Had to go. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And I went like because that's what you're supposed to do. Sure. And um, and I would tell sort of off the path stories. I didn't do hard stories that much at at TMI. I did the the sidebar type things like what was the going on in town and that sort of deal. Mm. Um, but right after that, I moved out and went to uh, uh, North Carolina, Raleigh. Madison, Wisconsin, and then Orlando, Florida. Oh my God! All places I've been through minus Madison. Yeah, yeah. And ended up um, ended up back here in '82. So you why'd know. you leave? Uh, opportunity. I went. I wanted to go do something else. I became the Tar Heel traveler in North Carolina. <gasps> what's the Tar? I know that the school's Tar Heels, but what's the Tar Heel traveler? <laughs> well, it was a is a version of on the road. You know. So you started all these other ones. Yeah. Are they still going? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think the Tar Heel Traveler might still be going. That's incredible. Yeah. I know. That's and, awesome. Um, and I was a Wisconsin storyteller. And in Florida, the, the stories were Mike's people. That's, that's what the headline was. Mike's so, people. So I, mean, yeah. so, I mean, just from that initial, this is what you're going to do from now on. Yeah. You just went and did that from now on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's the way it, that's the way it worked out. Yeah. You're going to win a million dollars from here on. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean and I mean you know what the, you know what the you know what the the weird thing is is that you went to two flat states. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing going I I was in four hurricanes in Orlando, Florida. What was it like 2004 or something mm-hmm. like when they all hit? Mm-hmm. And yeah. the town lost power. Mm. And I didn't realize that without mountains you have no idea where you are. No. <laughs> you have no idea where you are. And the news down, I'll tell you what though, but the news around here, like, and I used to live in LA, they would screw up all the time. Mm-hmm. And the news around here does it maybe a 10th of the time that everyone else does. So I'm actually mm-hmm. impressed by how the news organizations around here are mm-hmm. actually like on the ball when you mm-hmm. watch like the one with, you know, 4 million viewers and, they, and all of a sudden the weatherman's mic isn't working. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's a yeah, dog I've, running I've, across. I've just... run that. I've run the hand <laughs> mic out too. Yeah. You're that, you're the person <laughs> you're who the forgot person to on the set. No, turn not... off the mute button. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, <laughs> I have a lot of stories about that. I have to watch what I say. <laughs> so, I mean, what was, what, if, if you can, if you can, if you can, you know, I think you, I think you have an illustrious career and I know that you're a modest person and you're never, ever going to, you know, probably say that. Um, is there like a couple of stories that really stick out to you that aren't, aren't like, you know, like a three mile Island story, but more of like, just, just, just stories that, you know, for some reason still stick with you. We did, um, I hesitate to say yes or no. Well, I mean, it's like picking person. your favorite kid. I know but, you don't want to. Somebody but, but, that you've but done that's a why story I'm not saying with. favorite. I'm saying yeah. the ones that stuck with you for oh, some the reason. The ones that stuck with me, yeah. Um, there was a. Um, um, well, we went and did the Bedford bed race. We did that story. What is that? In Bedford. Of <laughs> but course. what's the bed race? Are they literally. Oh, is that like they a derby challenge, beds. but in beds? Yeah. We yeah. have a lot of those in this area because we covered them so much. Like they yeah. have the. the the Porta Johns, like the toilets, like sounds like a terrible way to travel. <laughs> and it's a race, so you have to build a porta potty that you race. 
Nats in, in NEPA. That will never, and, you will I never mean, see me enter. There's, I know only in Pennsylvania he's done a few articles over the last couple of months because I, I get them on all the random stuff that Pennsylvania is known for. And those races were on that mm-hmm. list. Yeah. Tell what, okay, so tell me about that. Tell me about that. Oh, well, that was, uh, you know, it was a like a downhill race, but with uh, beds. You know, I mean, do you ever just, I mean, do you ever just like stand next to your photographer and go like, this is wild. How did we get here? Yeah. Usually that's what we say to each other. Well, there, there was another one, um, which is, uh, immortalized in my mind. Uh, the, uh, the tobacco spitting competition we went to. Oh my God. That must have stunk. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that must have stunk. Uh, like, well, the, the tobacco whole, spit tobacco does not smell good. <laughs> but yeah, I know, but see, you didn't stand it. So what the whole trick was at that tobacco spitting contest. Now, you got to understand this is part of history. Yeah, these these this type of contest, because the woodsmen in the old days they had nothing else to do. They sit around a bunkhouse at night. Well, and, they didn't have an Xbox. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, so they had, but what they did have was a pot-bellied stove. And in the winter time, the stove would get red hot, cherry red around the belly. Right. And that's what they did at the tobacco spitting contest. You spit at the stove, but you had to hit the red spot and make the spit sizzle. That's the key. <laughs> what do you, wait, what do you win? Well, you win a, a trophy. <laughs> yeah, but is it- do you get like a lifetime supply of Parodies or something? I don't know. No, <laughs> no, no. You get, you get skull long cut for the rest of your life. You get one? But Just I mean, how many, like, and I and I don't mean to sound naive or ignorant, but I mean, I mean, is is this like a well attended event? Oh yeah, yeah. It was at the Pennsylvania Lumberman's Museum, and I honestly, what? yeah, I said I honestly don't know if they still have it or not, but yeah, it's up in Bradford County. We've uh, got to go. I don't know if they have that contest anymore, but I'm gonna look it up. The tobacco I spitting go. contest was um, at that at that time, um, right around Fourth of July. And um, we went up there and we did we did the story. You know? I mean, but some of, but like I, I I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to like envision how this story was told by <laughs> From you. From the distance, yeah. <laughs> everyone's wearing the, the, everyone's wearing cut, you, cut of bark garbage bags. I'll yeah. tell you how bad it was. The judge was wearing a yellow raincoat. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because he had to get he had to get close enough to hear it sizzle. <gasps> oh my god. So, <laughs> Well, now I know in case they ever ask me to be a, a, a celebrity or not celebrity, a judge. Don't do <laughs> a it. Celebrity. Don't yeah, don't <laughs> yeah, wear a slicker. <laughs> so what I mean I mean this is just like this like you I mean you're a raconteur. Like that's 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 what you do. But but mm. you're not even, even though some of the things like you you may editorialize a little bit, I I think it's more it's more poetic mm. than it is opinion. Mhm. You know what I mean? So like throwing yeah. in like you know ad- like adjectives or or descriptive like I always I always I me- I remember listening to you and just thinking it's it's like I make this joke you know like when people drive and they go the wrong way and I'm like stop taking the Hemingway way mm-hmm. and they're like what does that mean and I'm like the scenic route like stop like just let's just get there <laughs> right mm-hmm. but there's a beauty in the in the in 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 just like the calm of how the story is told mm-hmm. like I like. Mm-hmm. Have you ever gotten angry? <laughs> <laughs> I try not you ever, to. You, but ever, see, you ever yelled in a pillow? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you if you look at the if you look at the tobacco spitting contest, mm-hmm. and strictly from a, <clears throat> a standpoint of out here as an observer, yeah, you could make a case for that being a terrible situation, because here we are endorsing um, tobacco use? The use of tobacco, right? Thing, which le- can lead to cancer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't look at it that way. I thought, I don't care what they're doing, um, what they're chewing. I care about what's going on in front of me. And that's the story. And the story is based in history. For better or worse, that's what happened years ago. And I don't judge that. Mm -hmm. I don't judge the people taking part in this Tobacco spitting contest. Yeah, but it's about culture and it's about it is history and it's about community. It is, and it was a lot of fun. You know, the, I mean, uh, to watch these guys do this, um, it was it turned out to be a lot of fun. People had a good time that day. Um, this is what happened that day, mm-hmm. and I'm reporting that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm not judging them for what they're doing. I'm not looking at them with a bad eye saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't be chewing tobacco. Right. Well, maybe I think you shouldn't be chewing tobacco, but I'm not going to say that here. That's mm -hmm. not my job. My job here is to tell the story. And that's what I did. You know, how, how important is it? Especially in, and you know, we can't ignore the present. Mm -hmm. um, how, how important is it to have that impartiality in, in reporting? Is it, it like, cause I always, cause that's part of the thing. Like I remember after nine 11, like you said, we talked about this. I remember after nine 11, everything got editorialized. Everybody had an opinion and you know, mm -hmm. it's not the Cronkite, you know, and that's the way it was, mm -hmm. you know, how important is it to be impartial? How important is it to, to, you know, just the facts, Jack and, and serve it in a way that hopefully is palatable to, to whatever audience is consuming it. Well, I think you have to be verifiable. And you have got to be the voice of truth. Mm -hmm. When people turn their sets on or listen to it on the internet or whatever, right? the voice they hear ought to be someone speaking the truth. That they can trust, and they know that they, that they can, can trust, trust them. Mm -hmm. Frankly, most of the time, in my opinion, I don't really care about your opinion. I don't really care. <laughs> in you my know? opinion, I don't care about but your I opinion. Love I That's love right. that. <laughs> I we wanted... should have Mike Stevens bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion, I don't care about your opinion. Yeah, I don't. Um, I care about. I care about what happened that day. Mm -hmm. That's what I care about, and um, I've done stories over the years. Uh, you know, when, when, um, the nine 11 happened, um, some mass shootings here and there, yeah. mm -hmm. um, various people died because of whatever. Yeah. And I would do stories about them, not necessarily stories, but more like essays, I think. Because I mean, it, is that what you would call it? Yeah. Cause it, it grabbed me, mm -hmm. but I always made sure that whatever I said, the facts were in there. Mm -hmm. Right. So I took some liberties with doing the essay pieces, mm -hmm. um, but I made sure whatever facts I had in it were actually true. Right. I didn't make them up, and I didn't bend them any way, mm -hmm. shape, form, or manner. Like there was no there was no bias in in, no. in whatever it was. No, it was just done, and um, and that was it. You know. Um, we did a story on the fact that there was no, there were no airplanes out that oh, night. Oh, after 9-11? Yeah, that yeah. night. There were well, no except WNEP. We got, we, we called first, well, we, WNEP called First Amendment, I remember, for September 11th. Mm -hmm. And Skycam 16 was up in the air. Mm -hmm. And do, because I still, I have a copy of it. Um, but they caught the one tower collapsing um, from Skycam. So, did they? Yeah, I have it. I have it at home on a on a DVD, mm. but <clears throat> I know WNEP and I think maybe only two other ones maybe in in the area were like had actually gained First Amendment access to air for like reporting and stuff like that. Mm. What? It's, sorry, I got thrown for a loop that <laughs> Skycam sixteen flew to Manhattan. Well, you could <clears throat> see it from Skycam, like. On one of the Monroe County borders, I believe, because I remember mm. like I remember Paul Cabasa, his photographer for on the Pennsylvania Road, has been there for a long time. And I know he told me about it and like, you know, a couple other people. I mean, in situations like that, after after a tragedy and you try to go, you're not going to you're not going to tell the story of the tragedy. The story of the tragedy mm -hmm. has already been told. Yeah. Right. I mean, do you go tell about the aftermath or the effects of that? And, and and to find, you know, the There's, humanity yeah. in that, is that, is that. Yeah, I think that's the word. That's a good word, humanity. I'm really killing it with you today, Mike. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I try to, um, I tried to speak um, for everybody else and I couldn't, I can't, I still no, can't nobody speak can. for everybody. Nobody can. But I thought, you know, there's probably a lot of people out there thinking in this particular way, thinking as I am, you know, mm -hmm. you're shocked, um, just sad, just terribly sad. Yeah. Okay. And frightened. 
and frightened. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to sum all those things up. And I wanted to say all that because I thought it was important to do. And so I went and, you know, went to the producers and I said, I'd like to, can I do a, a piece tonight? And they said, sure, go ahead. And so I, you know, we used video from the, the incident and the, the fact that there were no planes in the sky that night, which spoke to me volumes of the emptiness of the rest of the country now that this incident had happened, how bad it was, how sad it was, and how terrible it was. And they were still, they were still there. The dust literally hadn't settled yet at that yeah. hour. Mm -hmm. And um, we, were, we were talking about it and you know, trying to put it into some kind of a level that people could feel, relate to, I guess, maybe. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Do you remember the 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 gist of of what that piece was about? No, I don't. I just um, I don't. They were. I don't remember them. Remember these stories a lot. I just well, do three a week. In, if if at least that's yeah. what you were still doing, that's a that's a lot of that's a yeah. lot of, that's a lot of minutes to remember. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of time into it. Um, but no, I don't remember that. I mean, do you, did you feel com did you feel compelled? I mean, in, in to 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 look at you know, especially situations like that, like, let's look at the, let's not look at the situation. Let's look at the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. cause like, you know, like we said before, everybody's got a story. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, I think that's the way I did it. It was, um, it was kind of a, we, it was a difficult time, a difficult day. Yeah. And, um, uh, an unbelievable day. I remember looking at the second tower falling I couldn't. Believe, I couldn't imagine what I was seeing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was a rerun of the first tower. Oh my! Wait, wait. Yeah, I've yeah. talked. About, I've talked yeah. about this. I was so. I was. I was newly twenty-one, mm -hmm. and I and I never woke up early. And I remember it was eight forty-five. I woke up. I was hung over as hell, mm -hmm. and I turned on CNN, and I I think I made bacon in the microwave, <laughs> and I'm like, why are they showing the repeat from like ninety-two? Mm. Like that's. And then I saw the second plane hit and like mm. the world, the Stopped. world at that <laughs> moment dramatically Stopped. changed yep. for everyone. Yep. Yeah. And exactly. I remember the fear and I remember my father was at a, uh, uh, what do you call those things when everybody goes there looking for employees? A job fair? <laughs> yeah, job fair. He was at a job <laughs> fair. Um, and mm. you know, this is, I had a pager, maybe an Ericsson yeah. shitty cell I phone. I had an Ericsson phone and, my and it had the internet and my, on it. And my father's <laughs> calling me for updates and I remember they said the FAA closed all the airspace. Yep. Yep. And I was like, because you, you had no idea. You mm -hmm. had no idea what was next. No. no. And there was a lot of misinformation and that was the start of the ticker. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. the, the networks didn't cut to commercial. They were now brought, they were now doing news in a scrolling Chiron on the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where that came from and then everybody started to you know turn news into this 24-hour editorial mm -hmm. that is just opinions and people yelling at each other and you don't yeah. understand and no you don't yeah. understand and I think it's I think it's really hurt um the cultural dynamic mm. if that <clears throat> is appropriate to say I mean I'm not asking whether you agree or disagree because yeah, Good. but <laughs> but you're not on the air right now on on, <laughs> on certain news stations. But I mean, I mean, did you? I mean, can you at least say that like the way we're given or process information now? And I'm not saying facts because mm -hmm. information is just new things that you hear that could or cannot be true. Um, do you think that that's really shifted a lot since? You know, maybe even the late well, with social media, I'm sure it has yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, just look at, I mean, just look at what happened with uh, what happened at the Lincoln Memorial, where you have you know a bunch of groups and and nobody's right. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. but mm -hmm. but depending on who's telling the story and how you're looking at it, you can make enemies out of any of them. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. I mean, do you is there a responsibility? Yeah, because your words are so powerful. Yeah, so I I mean, we don't really get people who report the news on our podcast and we're really grateful that you're here. Um, but I mean, do you, do you like, do you, do you see less facts lately? 
Yeah. yeah. What's your I, opinion? I, I and I'm not, and I'm not saying, news. And, but I'm also yeah. not saying over the last two years. I no. think it's I think it's worked its way. So I, I I don't blame anything recent. I think this is just the you know the snowball was going down the hill and it just it just started to gather other talking heads and now mm-hmm. we're at where we're at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's um. I, I think what I looked for was how the people felt, uh, people in our area uh, were feeling about 9-11. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think as far as the social media is concerned, as you were getting, <clears throat> alluding to, um, we're too quick to jump at what we see in front of us. Right. We see a picture and we say, oh, that guy's wrong. He's terrible. Right. You ought to be taken outside and beaten to within an inch of his life. Yeah, which is, you know, really yeah. American. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the point, is, the point yeah. is we don't we don't know that for sure. You see, the initial, I, I remember that story. I saw it, I saw it myself. I was on Facebook, which I spend too much time on. Huh? But, There's a support <laughs> group. We'll go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I go, to, I go to Facebook and I see this thing pop up, you know, and... And everybody's looking at this guy, this kid, looking at the the, at the Native the, American, yeah, Native American guy, and the, I don't remember what the headline was underneath, but I thought, I don't know, a lot of un- unanswered questions there. What's what's the what's rest before, of the what's story? after? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and and you know as well as I do, you put something on video, there's a beginning and an end, and there's sure. all the stuff in the middle. Right. Yeah. And if you happen to be looking at the middle, you may not have a fair representation of what's going on. Um, we're too we're too quick to jump at what is in front of us. We just dive right onto it and say, "Ah, he's wrong," or "No, she's right." I can see that. Well, because he's wrong. See, that's mm-hmm. not the way it needs to be. You need to look at the whole picture and say, "All right, what happened here?" before all that and after all that. And now how many questions do we have? We have more questions. Okay. Let's go ask the people who should have the answers. Let's not just dive into the story based on what we're seeing right in front of us. Something that struck me about the whole thing, cause I was one of those feigned outrage people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cause I'm a, you know, I'm a keyboard tough guy. Um, <laughs> But I also I also posted the full video and I said we're all wrong. Mm-hmm. We didn't get it. And I was I was sitting in bed the other night and I was I was thinking about a, a picture speaks a thousand words. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I realized was it speaks a thousand words, but it doesn't speak a thousand facts. Exactly. And 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 I'm happy that the news organizations are holding each other to task. But the issue is with social media. They're now using it as sourcing of fact Mm -hmm. because somebody posted something somewhere out of context. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the scary thing now is now we need context for like, you know, you know, if it, you know, when the first televised murder was Lee Harvey Oswald, Mm -hmm. there's a beginning, middle and an end to that, you know? So we didn't know all the, you know, what are the facts to that, which we some of us still don't know to this day, or some of us hypo- hypo- hypothetically think what what happened. But I mean, if you take that eight to ten seconds, there's way more to the story on both sides. And in and in you know forty fifty years, we still haven't learned mm-hmm. that something happened before you saw that, <laughs> and something's going to happen after you saw that. So maybe we shouldn't be quick to, you know, yeah, castigate or or applaud. Mm-hmm. As we do, which which you know, which 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 makes me sad that we're not back at the time where you had to actually measure your words mm. and not use whiteout. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It's absolutely true. You know, am mm. I am I turning into something other than a liberal right now, or no, what's but happening? It's I like don't my know. two favorite prophetic, amazingly <laughs> talented, worded men are in the I've same just, room I've as me been, right I've now. Just been, I've just been prepping <laughs> for about a week and a half now to see if Mike Stevens can like me. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I would like him to go like, yeah, you're all right. Um, <laughs> I mean, but do you, do you see hope for our? Fu- I mean, do you see hope for the future, or do you oh, think gosh, that there's I, nothing to worry about? Or I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> I do, don't yeah. know. do you see? Do you see? Do you see? How about this one? Do you see 
us still telling the type of stories that you still tell. Yeah, I do. And I, and the reason and do, being, and should we tell more? Uh, well, yeah, there's a time and place for it, <clears throat> you know? Um, but I think the, the road pieces over the years were stories that people could look at and enjoy and in their mind say, well, at least for two minutes today, this part of the world was all right. Mm. This guy made toy trucks or he was busy f getting his collection of toy trains in order. And this lady did um, salt and pepper shakers. Right. And in, for those two minutes, the world is just fine. Yeah. There's no murder, mayhem, or mishap. Nope. Uh, nobody's killing anybody. Nobody's trying to rip anybody off. Nobody's stealing money. Mm -hmm. It's just a guy doing whatever he does. It's a woman collecting whatever she collects. It was a nice, peaceful two minutes in a world that's yeah. frequently too chaotic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what we did over all those years. I mean, not to fanboy a lot, but, I mean, <laughs> you, you were kind of like the antidote to pain. Yeah. I mean, and, and, I, and I mean that in like the nicest yeah. way because, you know, the old <laughs> adage of if it bleeds, it leads. Mm -hmm. And then Mike Stevens <laughs> comes true. on. Right. No, but it's true. <laughs> you know? But then I find myself after watching some of your pieces. like, Oh, my when, God, I feel great. <laughs> but but I'll walk like like Scranton or something and I'll hear your voice in my head, like <laughs> narrating like yeah, how, psychosis. how pretty Good. the trees are uh -huh. with like the sky and the water and everything. Just like to take in the moment because you like. And then I always say things at the end of my sentence in my head, like, dear viewer, like, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> just because it just goes with the territory. So I'm like, you know, this guy is so blue or like whatever. Yeah. But it's like taking in the moment. And then in my own head, I'm going, dear viewer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can hear your voice in my head narrating my walks around Lake Scranton. You know, I mean, but I appreciate all... life a little bit more in those like instances yeah. because of watching your pieces yeah. is the, is the point point of it. So it's, we did a couple of times <clears throat> we've done this um, just for the fun of it, because it was an amusement factor. <clears throat> we took a hundred feet of road and we, we were coming back the, the most recent one was last summer uh, coming back from a place called white mills. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. By uh, Holly. Yeah. Coincidentally on white mills road. Mm -hmm. Oh, so <laughs> easy to remember. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, but what we did was, and what we've done is you take, say, all right, let's stop here. So we stopped and that's where we start the story. Really? From there and you just, you look around at what you see and that's it. People like you and me, normally, any of us, you don't see that sort of thing. No. You just keep on going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we miss things that are right in front of us and then we go past them because that's the way it is right. today. We don't walk from point A to point B. We drive at 55 miles an hour. Right. And we does not allow for a lot of time to look around. No. Mm -hmm. We took the hundred feet of road and said, here's what we saw in a hundred feet of road. Look, there's a guy over there who's rolling hay on a field. Watch this. And he, he rolled the hay up pick it up in a, in a thing, a hook, mm -hmm. carry it on his tractor down and put it in place. And that was what he did. Across the street, there was um, Queen Anne's Lace, a field of Queen Anne's Lace. Mm -hmm. And the gentle breeze was coming in over the top of them, and you could oh, hear nice. them rustling in that wind across the street from it. See, this is what I hear in my head at Lake Scranton. And right next to it was <laughs> another, it was another uh, uh, big pot of colorful flowers also waving in the breeze next to the Queen Anne's Lace. And you could hear the wind coming in through the trees, you know. And it was a beautiful way to spend an afternoon. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a panic attack? <laughs> yeah. I was going to make a comment yeah. about him being like your natural Xanax or is something. Is anxiety is? Have yeah. you ever felt <laughs> Yeah, there's been occasions. <laughs> but, I mean, but, but I mean, like, like if you had... If you had a if you had a wish or two, I mean, what would it be? Would one of them be like, you know, just slow it down, you know, oh, maybe yeah. a little bit. That's yeah. Um, we need to, we need to. For goodness' sake, we you know we go like at a meteoric pace every day. 
Yeah. There's no question about it. Three of us in this room. 25,000 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, you, you don't, you miss so much in that speed lane that you're in um, that you need to sit back and, and pay attention to what's going on around you. Even the minuscule things, the small things, which are the most interesting things to, to look at. We did two minutes on clouds one time um, just oh, because I they were there. I yeah, but they yeah, don't. But, yeah, but, just because they were there. I yeah. know, but they don't allow for that stuff anymore. Who's like, they? Like news and all of that. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Because let's, if they can, let's, let's, they can put, let's pillage. If we could, if they could put two minutes of additional ad time let's in there. Let's get angry so we can get calm. You yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's up to what the, what, if they can get the ad time in there, they're going to choose the money over that. You know, like just, and people just, don't like, cause those stories, they're not the ones, <clears throat> you know, that are necessarily like the September 11th or the murders that drive everybody to it. You yeah, know, but it's, but it's almost, it's almost like, it's like I said, like it's <clears throat> like the antidote. Like it's almost, it's mm-hmm. almost like, you know, we're, 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 we're bludgeoned by. Yeah. It's like the measuring things here when you got so much. Yeah. Bad, it's, it's all, it's, it's like, nice to have something. Like, why do you think all life is pain? Because it's all you're shown, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and that's all yeah. that you think you're experiencing. It's not and then true, though. it's not, no, it's not. And, and you for, and I, and I don't know if you realize this, but for hundreds of thousands of people mm-hmm. have, have, it, you know, even if they didn't, you know, model their lives about that. <laughs> I mean, it had an impact. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't think of, I have never in one instance in my 38 years of life seen Mike Stevens on TV mm-hmm. and someone said, turn that shit off. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anybody. I've never, no one's <laughs> ever done it. Like, I've seen it. I've seen. They tell you to shut up. <laughs> yeah, oh, shh, Mike Stevens is talking. Yep. Shut up. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. Like, f- like, you can hear forks hit plates. People stop chewing. Yeah. Like, and, and, and it's I've, incredible. And, but it's, it's almost like, it, it, I, I don't even want to say it's a magic trick because it's it's like how, like it's amazing that you get people that you're not you're not physically even in their presence and you yeah. get them to just stop for a moment, even yeah. if it's two minutes. And that two minutes is is invaluable. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you ever think about the scope of that or, or like no, it, you're just did. like or do you just like do the thing and my like words you go mean, home? yeah my yeah. words mean something but i'm just gonna put them out there and i don't want like he doesn't want your opinion <laughs> no, I, I, my opinion is i don't it's want nice, your... it's nice to hear don't get me wrong it's nice to hear and i'm flattered that people actually but that's not why you're doing like it. it no i did it because it was my job for one thing but number two it was also a way of meeting some fascinating people. Yeah. People who I never would have had the opportunity to meet otherwise. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things, one of the advantages for our viewers. Um, they get to meet people that they never would have had an opportunity to, to meet otherwise. Mm-hmm. Never. Yeah, and you're bringing them into, into all yeah. of our homes. And yeah. we didn't even, we, I mean, there's people you're like, oh, that person might be a little crazy. Nuts. But... But we're still going to hear their story. But see, I don't judge might, them. I don't yeah. judge them. And, and that was my next thing that I was going to say. Yeah. It's like, you know, I might think that they're crazy, but they're not being portrayed no. in Yeah, and that if you way. say it, if somebody like you says it, then people believe you. So no. then when people say, oh, this guy's nuts, 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 and then he comes on as the, you know, uh, weather-telling farmer, <laughs> now all of a sudden he's got yeah. some... Street cred from yeah, Mike Stevens, yeah. and he's yeah, now I, respected. I, 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 pr- I promise you this, and I'm basing it solely on nothing. Okay. <laughs> I promise you this, that that first segment that aired, when mm. the guy said, listen to the crickets, <laughs> everyone did. Yes, they started counting. Everyone did. Yep. Yep. And that's and that's the power of, of television. Mm-hmm. That's the power that, that, you know, a lot of these, these, corporations and people have and they need i think Mm -hmm. that they need to remind people that there are really in the vicinity (laughs) of you as a human being Mm -hmm. there are very beautiful amazing things Mm -hmm. that that's not about foreign uh, powers uh, trying to do things well especially this area this area is built on cynicism well that too (laughs) but it's it's a sense it's literally like our ancestors like built the foundation that we're literally standing on it's today. 
And this area has so many connections to everywhere. Like we always say, all roads, we said before, leads be- lead back to NEPA. Yep. So when you can take a person's like actual story, like say September 11th, or even just say for the tobacco spitting contest, and you like can highlight, you know, whether the good, bad, they're indifferent, or the overcoming, or something like that. Like that's the stuff people. And it's and it's and it's. They don't we- watch a ton of it, but they'll love to see it when it's happening. I mean, people like to be inspired or feel like they're not alone or feel like, okay, so somebody else is going through something, but they got through it or, you know, it does. There's yeah, so there's many like different a, there's things. like a hope. Yeah. There's like a hope yeah. that you give. Yeah, it well, is. maybe, I don't know. I, that'd be nice to say. I, mean, I mean, do you, be, but do you still, do you still bring, do you still bring 10th grade English into all of this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like um, even after all these years, I mean, is that still like, do you every now and again remind yourself that like, oh, this is, I remember. <laughs> this is kind of the germ of it. Yeah. It um I, I the language is important and that and I've never I hope never lost sight of that. I hope I use the right words in the right places. Yeah. And um, I don't think you've ever screwed up. So well, I may have one or John's twice, got big shoes to fill. John Meyer does, man. <laughs> he's got you didn't screw up for forty years. <laughs> well he's tall, right? Yes. Yes, he already has the big shoes. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. Probably size 13, Um, 14. (laughs) Yeah, it's the, I've enjoyed it. You know, I enjoy the, I enjoy being able to tell a story um, and to do it in two minutes. You know, it's a, to me, that's a, that's a feat in and of itself. Do you find that, do you find the time constraint um, valuable? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. In this case, in some cases it is. Yeah. Uh, Other times I'm, I'm kind of chomping at the bit to get, you know, more I time. 30 seconds or 40 <clears throat> seconds or whatever. And they say, well, we don't, we can't do it tonight. You know, we don't, there's no room. We don't have it. So I, they allow me to do things for a home and backyard as well. And so there I can get longer, I can get a longer run in mm-hmm. it. You know, do you ever, do you ever, do you ever see, and I don't know, I don't, because my next is going to be like, what's the future, but do you ever, do you ever see yourself doing something more long, you know, like a, the story that you think needs, you know, can we tell the story in two minutes? Sure. But mm-hmm. would we rather 15 minutes and maybe put it on the web or something, you know, where you're not constrained by. Yeah. I, that's an interesting perspective. I've never, I, I, again, I don't, I'm not familiar with, with web workings or any of that. Other. Call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's the point. I don't know. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know where I can go. Um, I just sort of do, do my thing you know, and, uh, and see what happens. Um, but I, when I got out of television, when I'm, when I got to do on the road pieces, um, when did you get out of that? Like two weeks ago? Yeah. A couple of weeks ago. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. yeah. The John piece, I think is that a was a fresh wound or is that still good stuff? Is no, that still... no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I think they did the piece, the package, uh, with John Meyer interviewing him about how John's taking over for yeah. Mike. Yeah. Who's a better interviewer, that was like John two Meyer weeks or me? Ago? <laughs> I'm, not gonna go there. I'm not yeah yeah that's like that's like me that's like me asking fair. you how much do you think i weigh <laughs> yes. um i mean what so i mean did was it i mean are you just is it just a transition or what's 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 next so john's gonna john's gonna do it john's and then, gonna john's doing the road pieces he already started yeah and uh, he's been doing them a couple of them um just because of the timing yeah um and so i'm on to my other life now which is um doing uh I do some stuff for home and backyard and uh, I'll do uh, the photo link library on, on Fridays. Um, and I do a blog, you know, and uh, we may <clears throat> end up going into a podcast in the future. But the point is, I don't know what avenues are open. So I just kind of fake it till I make it, so to speak. I love that. You know, and I'm just doing my thing. And, um, I mean, do you have any ideas about like what, what, what you're leaning towards or what you want to do? Or you just, it's kind of like all options are on the table. All options are open. Yeah. 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 It seems like you've, you've surpassed any goal or dream you would have had for yourself, like as a child. This is a big, this is a big win for me. (laughs) I just want you to, I just want you to know. And he complimented you, you, I know, twice with your words uh, that I'm aware of. Yeah, I'm a big fan of words. (laughs) He is. I'm a big fan of words, but. He is, he is. You get yourself a good dictionary and a good uh, thesaurus. thesaurus. A thesaurus is seriously the most amazing thing when I finally, and I didn't start using it until I was in college. How do you think think I write the ads? 
<laughs> I wonder where you get some words sometimes because yeah. I'm like, oh, it's a word, and I'm gonna have to figure out what it means so I can use it. Yeah, when I was in like <laughs> when I was in like third grade, they're like, this is a thesaurus. I know they tell and I'm you like, synonyms. I tell they tell they show it to you, but you don't appreciate it. Yeah. As an adult, I highly recommend everybody getting a thesaurus. <laughs> yeah, it will change your life. It really I found, will. I found other words than dude. Yeah. Dude, yeah, really? you can use other Dude. words. It's incredible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The only thing that I have now is that, you know, to do my obituary that I've been asking you for probably a decade. <laughs> now, no, okay, okay, now like now tell me now honestly tell me about tell me about Stacy. Is she as weird as I think she is? <laughs> I had I, to put, I, love, I love her I to, to the moon and back. Act. I had to put on an act. WNP had always been my dream job. And when I was doing it, Especially in the beginning, I didn't want him to know that I was like fangirling, a complete screw up, and fangirling. <laughs> so I had to make it look like I was. A professional. Oh, did you fake it? To you? fade it, faked it. I still haven't made it. <laughs> <laughs> We're still working. We're still working. We're still working. <laughs> so I mean, was I mean? So what's I mean? What's 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 next? I mean, is there anything? I told there... you my obituary. No, shut up, Stacy. It's not about you. I want it. I want it. Um, not about you. I want to hear. I want to hear it before I die, because he's his voice. <laughs> Did you voice. already write it? No, I want him to do it. Like he does the obituaries for everybody else that dies at WNEP. You know, like when You're somebody a dies. Sick person, there's something. No, because I want to. If I want to hear what anybody has to say about me, and I, <laughs> I already update my obituary more than my resume. You already know that. But to hear it, you, you want to hear. Wait, you want to hear? I want to hear Mike Stevens do like. A video obituary of for me, just well, for me. Well, maybe when's your, when, wait, when's your birthday? <laughs> August. <laughs> Mike, I've been asking I... him for over a decade. Okay, he said no because he doesn't want Mike, me to die. Mike, I get you it. I, you, you and I might have to do a co-production yeah. for Stacy's birthday. <laughs> okay. I, told, I want even, I'm not going to put it out anywhere. I just want it for myself. I just want to hear like I, Mike I'll, Stevens I'll tell, tell me what, I'm great. Mike, if you if you did that, like, and and I'll uh, you can get your your own photographer. I'll I'll help with it mm -hmm. but i'll never see stacy again she'll be watching that on repeat <laughs> like like sally like, field oh, at the oscars my, 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 you really like me you really like yes, me it's it's true um <laughs> on, on from i i know i know that stacy's a fangirl i'm a fanboy <laughs> um i my family is everybody i know <laughs> like you're you're literally one of the last people we trust <laughs> True. You know, <laughs> and, and, I, and I don't say that lightly. Um, you know, please don't, please don't stop. Whatever new iteration that you have, um, whatever help you need, we'll see what we can do, and 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 hopefully help <laughs> manifest that. But you, you've you've honestly been the the penicillin to a lot of the world's problems, mm -hmm. and and I don't. I don't think I don't I don't I, I I doubt you'll ever give yourself credit for that, and I don't know if people do. Um, but honestly, it it's it's a pleasure and an honor to sit and talk with you. The only mm -hmm. thing I wish I, I have I have a really quick one. Was Nolan Johannes a party animal? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was a really nice. He was a gentleman. I love that he was dude, a gentleman, man. That, is, that he was a great guy. That guy. I mean, that's. I worked he's, with he's him got very a great briefly. Voice too, man. Yeah. He's yeah. got a real great voice. Did he just recently pass away? Yeah, he's, yeah. he passed. Oh, he was I great. I worked with him in the beginning when I was directing. In the beginning, he was so nice. I mean, he's from Mo he was from Moscow. He lived in Moscow. So was, he, was he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super oh. nice guy. Oh, everybody said he was a gentleman. And when I worked with him, he, he but just I mean, was. I mean, I mean, he's, I mean he's, he comes from... I, oh, God, I hate to say that no journalist has integrity, but... I mean, there was there was a different set of rules that mm -hmm. that probably you and him had. I mean, not, yeah. not to say that you guys are the same age. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, news like in the changed. business, yeah, news, news has changed. changed. And you know, we don't. We're not. We don't go we don't into need, no, it. No, we don't need to. No, we don't. But I mean, there because was. Because Mark can have a lot of stories. No, <laughs> no, of no, 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 no. No. Um. But yeah, I mean, but there was like a gentlemanly. Like <laughs> yes. it was. It was. It was. Like oh my god! Was, was, like the double header of both of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that was a great night. That would be a great night, wouldn't it be? Yeah, because we, we used to always we I used to always. Did you ever read my... Mike's books? No, I didn't even know you had a book. He has a yeah. couple. Life Plural? in the Life in the Slow Lane, man. Yeah. Yeah. What is there like five? Four of them. Four. Yeah. yeah I life have in them. the Slow Lane. So yes. you don't mind traffic. Uh, <laughs> they're fun. They're all like little stories that yeah. you know he tells us i have them i'll let you read them they're actually wait, wait, pretty can good. i buy them on like yeah. amazon or anything um no i don't think so 
See, I'm not a. Where does one get? Where does one get your I, things to help you make money? <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I I've got a post office box. That's about it. You know, <laughs> they're five dollars a piece anymore. And then you what? You just mail them to people? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you you're you're like your own agent and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, I had them. I had them. I have my own publisher. You know. I had them. Yeah, they were from year because I asked you, uh, and you signed them for me probably yeah. fourteen years ago. Yeah, I wrote. <gasps> yeah, I went and. Uh, we should ebook you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was doing. Um, I was doing um, newspaper columns. I yeah. did newspaper columns every week for fourteen years, and um, so uh, and it, somewhere along the way, as these things happen, it occurred to me that, gee, you know, maybe I could put these into a book. I never, you know, hey, kids, let's have a show. Right, 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 so, right, right, right. <laughs> Divine inspiration struck. Yeah. And I thought, I'll do a book. <laughs> Why not? What can go wrong here? Yeah. yeah. I saw <laughs> so, none. Yeah. So what? Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, I do the, um, I had a uh, friend who was an artist. So she did some of the illustrations. Well, she did all of the illustrations for the stories. Um. I had another friend who was an editor who could put all of it in those days. You had to just, you had to physically lay out books and yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so he could take it to the printer down here in Scranton and, um, and the guy could print it. You know? mm-hmm. And I remember leaving the print shop with, you know, did you ever have that feeling in your mind like, what did I do this for? Yeah, every day I wake up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, every day. And I left. I left the printer with a thousand books in the back of the station wagon. Oh no! And I'm thinking to myself, now what do I do? I got no idea. Uh-huh. I never. I don't know how to sell. I, I didn't never think did this that. Through. No, you're like you're like a musician. I bought all these. I bought oh, I bought a thousand CDs, and and every yeah. other musician goes. Well, at least now you got coasters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. So did you sell out of that run? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'm actually. I actually did, and. Um, um, I went on to do so. I had the money back. Yeah, right. Which is the important thing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now I could now I could finance book number two. Mm-hmm. So I went ahead and did volume two, mm-hmm. right, and three and four. But it was literally in the beginning. It was kind of like, um, like <laughs> I'd go to yeah, say, "Do you want to buy a book? Uh, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> and you buy this book? That's really what was going on, you know." <laughs> But I, Open in the trunk of your car? Yeah. yeah. And I, I went to, uh, so I'd go to bookstores, and they, fortunately, there were bookstores around at that point. Yeah. And um, a lot of them were nice enough to take the take the book in and, and try to sell it, mm-hmm. you know. And I had, I did book signings, and, um, you know, that was. Are you going to do a fifth that. book? I am thinking about a fifth, actually. I'm How about th- if I tell you to? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I had I there's some there's some uh, threads in the in the first four that probably could be smoothed out, brought up to speed a little bit, and um, uh, you know some of the stories that happened since then would probably find their way into a book. Yeah, and I mean you're still telling mm. stories too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But they weren't they weren't huge books, you know. Don't get me don't get me wrong. Little paperback pamphlets, really, for nothing else. Yeah, but mm. but 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 I mean. Who cares? Yeah. You know, who cares? There's like, uh-huh. I mean, there's all these people out there, you know, that are, uh, the only thing that stops them is fear. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to yeah. be, I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to have a failure, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. and, and you're, I mean, besides all the success that you've had, whether you deem it success or not, I mean, here's a guy who left a, a the, 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 the print shop with a thousand <laughs> and you're yeah. like, uh, yeah, I don't know what to do now. But, yeah. but, but you did it. And that's, and, and, yeah. and, 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 and in all honesty, a lot of the times that's the hardest part is just uh-huh. take the step, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and whatever happens, happens. It's, it's, you try fate, yeah. whatever, you at least try, you know, but at least you tried it. You know, mm-hmm. I always, I always go back mm-hmm. to, I don't know if you ever saw men in black with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. but there's a line in the movie where, um, Tommy Lee Jones is looking at apparently his former love, and Will Smith says to him, you know, well, better to love and loss than never loved at all. And Tommy Lee Jones dead stares, looks at him, and he goes, try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sure. it's like as long as you go out there and do it, you know, you have nothing You have nothing to be ashamed mm-hmm. of. You get one spin at the roulette yeah. wheel of life. Mm-hmm. You know, go do what you got to do. I'm so, 
so grateful that you're here Me and too. that you're talking to us. Me too. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. I mean, and then, you know, maybe you can become like this Hunter Thompson <laughs> ah, <laughs> rebellious, rebellious gonzo journalist that we can get in here and be like, tell me about Nixon. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> I'd rather talk about the chicken flying competition. I would love to. I mean, but that's but that that's the fun. beauty of it. It's mm-hmm. like it's like yeah. Something like some, some, you know, normal people, quote unquote, normal people would be like, chicken flying. Who, See, who cares? To me, I'd be and like, then, I'm and then Mike going. Stevens, and then Mike Stevens tells <laughs> you about it, and you're like, where do I get tickets? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, See, I think that's I think that's one of the things I'm going into now. I think I'm going to do. Um, I wanted to do this for a long time. Also, my limited knowledge of the web probably holds me back. But <laughs> you're not um, as limited as you think. Yeah. <laughs> What I wanted to do was to uh, basically tell road stories on the road in, in a blog. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, or a podcast mm-hmm. uh, because I could do audio with it. You know. I will show you, and, sir. Uh, mm-hmm. I will show you how to do it for cheap, <laughs> and I will show you how to do it well, <laughs> and everyone will be happy. Yes. And I will, and I and I will subscribe, <laughs> and every time a new episode comes out, I will listen in my car. <laughs> I listen to podcasts all the time. Do you? That's, he does. Yeah, that's all I do. He always sends them to me. And, you know, it's hard, especially being in the news business where everything is like information, information, fast, yeah, yeah, fast, yeah. fast. And then he sends me these podcasts that are, you know, an hour and a half, two hours long. And I'm like, I'm not, I I just barely make it through like six songs like in my car when I'm driving here. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know? Do you know what I just realized? What? Uh, Mike Stevens might have influenced my whole career. Okay. Well, speak. How so? Since long? you're fanboying. Yes. Because you tell stories. And I remember growing up with your stories. And and what I do is like, you know, I'll I'll give you for instance, like I do, we do a lot of nonprofit work and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, like I'll do, like I do coaches versus cancer. And, you know, every year there's an honoree and, you know, we talk to them about like their struggles and and what their family. And I always look at it as like, I want to know about the person, like cancer is secondary. Yeah. Like everybody knows that they have cancer, but, but we need to care. And we, and, and through that caring through these people being honest, cause I never sh- show them in a light that's not them. Right. You know, and I'm not trying to editorial edit it to make it fit a narrative that I have. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think, I think, I think you may have <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's one of those it things. Out, right. Yeah, it's one of those things that you don't realize till Over later. Here. Yeah, like yeah. you know, thirty years later, I'm like, oh, Mike well, Stevens influenced me to do everything, and he's sitting right in front of my face yeah. while yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. And you know what? They have that thing like, don't meet your heroes. I'm happy. <laughs> good, good. I'm I happy. Am happy. To that I makes am me happy. So then. happy. That's good. Hey, you think you'll come back when you write that fifth book in two weeks? Yeah, uh, in two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, I got other I got other things I got to uh, Yeah, we'll talk and we'll talk about, you know, how we can how we can uh make sure that, you know people tune in or check out your stuff. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> awesome. Good. Oh. Mike, thank you so thank much you. for joining oh, us. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Happy you that, you I'm happy. happy. I'm very happy. happy. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mike. Take thank care. you. <laughs>